Welcome to Tracy, one of the world's most prominent writers on sex and relationships. And she's just written a book. Here it is called Great Sex Starts at 50. <coughs> true. Yeah. Oh, some excited <laughs> whoops in the audience there. <coughs> so, so you say that's true? It is true. It's very true. Well, why, why does it start at 50? Um, well, it's quite, it was really interesting writing that book because this is my 17th book about sex. So I've written a lot of books about sex. And Obviously, I got to a couple of years ago, I was like, mm, is there really anything else I can say? And then, well, actually, it wasn't a couple of years ago, so I'm 58 now. But when I turned 50, it was like, OK, there is lots more to say. Because sex after 50 compared to sex pre-50 is a completely different ball game. How so? Well, you've got so many issues. Asking for went... a friend. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Asking for a bit. <laughs> well, you're dealing with so many issues. For women, it's the classic menopausal issues. For men, all of a sudden, it's erectile dysfunction. So there's two big whammies <laughs> in a go. You did ask. Girls. I did, no. okay, you did ask. You I, did ask. Listen, I, that's a serious thing, I know. Yeah, it is. It's a big thing. I mean, for men, not for <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we've got to behave like adults now. Come on, let's we've behave, got to like behave we have to. Um, the thing is, I mean, for most men, not getting an erection is a psychological catastrophe. You know, most men would rather not have sex at all than admit to their partners that they're not getting an erection. So this is a big problem for the over 50s. Is it an over, is it an age thing or um, can well, it be strike really early in life? But it can, it can strike at any age. I mean, you don't have to be, but aging penises tend to not get as hard as, as young penises. Of course it can, but it is a particular problem for the over 50s. So that's the big issue for men. For women, of course, you're dealing with postmenopausal symptoms like vaginal dryness, things like that. So sex becomes uncomfortable and they find that embarrassing. Then of course, you've got all the things that hit um, any age group, which is if you're in a long-term relationship with somebody, you know, that whole thing about I love them, but I don't fancy them anymore. I don't want to have sex with them anymore. Which now, that is, that is a big one for, yes. for some people, isn't it? I mean, people by, by the time you're in your 50s, you might be married for 30 years. Oh, yeah. So what do you do? Get them to dress up or what? <laughs> Is, is that a lot of the a lot of the things with over 50 sex is attitude is is like we're not built you're not supposed to be ripping each other's clothes off after you know 18 months really mother nature doesn't care after that she just wants you to reproduce eight so we, wait 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 18 months 18 months is that is that the point at which that's when spontaneous sex drive starts to fall. So we have to change our heads around. We have to, um, I mean, if you're with somebody for 30 years, of course you're not gonna be ripping each other's clothes off. You can have great sex, but it's a different type of sex. It's less spontaneous. It's more anticipatory where you plan it. You work out what you're going to do. It becomes, it's, it's a different type of sex. So is it, if you start to schedule it, this yeah. is what worries me. You, almost start to write it in the diary. <laughs> and that is a killer. It's not, you know, it's not a killer. There are two things... My that diary's got my agent can see it. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the thing is, there are two things that people hate me say. They hate me saying you have to talk about sex because no one likes talking about sex. You do in the beginning when it's all going well, but no one likes talking about it when it's not going well. And the other thing is you have to schedule sex, sex because in a long-term relationship, people are lazy. If you don't say, right, Sundays are going to be the day that we spend with each other, you know, maybe have a bit of sex, maybe not have a bit of sex, but just have a day or some, because otherwise it just doesn't happen. That whole, especially post-50, because desire doesn't tap you on, on the shoulder anymore. You have to create desire. Oh, but it's very good advice this, Dawn, isn't it? <laughs> Look a bit like... <laughs> the hospital Jer pass. Jer Jeremy and I are the same age, by the way. Um, I, was, I told my husband about this subject last night, and his, his words to me were, don't say anything. Yeah. So I'm actually not going to say anything. No, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's brilliant. And it, it, I'm actually definitely going to read this book. But like you, the idea of actually scheduling it, mm. I'm sorry if I actually, because we, we our, our diaries are linked on our phones. Mm. So if I put that on my phone, that we are going to have sex on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Come up with a password, a metaphor for it. Yeah. Like, yeah, you, we're going to bake cakes on a Sunday. You need a code. You clearly need a code word. Yeah. You can have right, a code. What's the code word? Let's, let's choose it now. Grass. Uh, cakes. Baking cakes in the oven. Yeah. Baking yeah. cakes. That's weird. That is weird, Bobby. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. It. Look, can Bobby, I just, yes. Go on. Ask you a question. Um, yeah. You say great sex begins at 50, mm. and I get the scheduling stuff, but mm. you're also saying there's a lot of erectile dysfunction yep. and a lot of vaginal dryness, yeah. something I didn't think I'd be saying on a Monday morning. <laughs> um, so how, how does, does it begin at 50? Yeah. Well, because sex then becomes less... Um, 
intercourse central, it be um, centered. So there's less penetrative sex. So it's, it's a, less about intercourse is the thing that, you know, is going to be the big star of sex, more foreplay. Most women get their orgasms through foreplay, through oral sex and stuff like that. So women, I mean, lots of older couples report higher satisfaction. So if you can just change your head around from thinking, you know, younger sex is better sex, it's just a different type of sex. Not it, athletic it actually, and, and, and yeah, hard bodied. Yeah, it's, it's just a different type of sex. Then you can have better sex. It's gentler, it's less, it's it's less orgasm focus, which is always a good thing, you know, because orgasm isn't the point of sex. It's all about the intimacy and the connection. It can be a lot better. So it really can. And then, of course, you've got this whole group of people, women who are, you know, it falls into two camps with women who, who are sort of go off sex. Then you've got these women who end up leaving relationships that they've been in. And suddenly they're out there in the world and it's like midlife wanderlust and they're trying all these new things and they're just... Just thinking, having sex on their terms, less people pleasing. Is what is the sexual peak of a woman? There is no sexual peak of anyone, I don't think. Fifty-four. <laughs> <I've, laughs> Out of life, Jeremy. I'm <laughs> late late forties, I think. I think, you might, right. yeah. I think you might be right. I think you might be right.